What's up, Brilliant Coders? It's your girl, Jillian, and I'm your host for Code Along. In our previous videos, we added animations that happen after multiple clicks of the mouse. In this video, I'm gonna spill the tea on how to add animations to the background. Like this moving ball, for example. All right then, let's get into it. Come with me to the Code Zone. Let's start learning how to animate a moving object in our background. For today's purposes, we'll practice this skill with a circle or ball. Like that. So you probably remember that we can create and name our own functions to use on our canvas. Functions are blocks of reusable code that perform a specific action, just like angle mode and create canvas. Since we want to show a ball moving in the background of our picture, inside of our draw function above our afro, we'll create another function called draw ball. Then below our draw function, let's add the following. Inside our draw ball function, let's start with the really easy step of creating a yellow ball with the circle function. The X and Y coordinates can be 50 and 350 because I want to be able to see the starting point of the ball on the canvas. You can also comment out the face and afro so that you have a blank canvas. Now I want the ball to bounce up and down in the Y directions, but I need a variable to store the position of the ball in the Y direction. Let's create a variable called circle Y and assign its value to 350, then replace 350 in the circle function. If we add the total sum operation from the previous videos, then the ball should move in the Y direction. So add circle Y equals circle Y plus one. Great, the ball is moving. Hmm. But, it's moving off the canvas to where I can't see it anymore. We need to set a boundary so that the ball stays on the page. In previous instances that we've set a boundary, like with the afro growing, we reset the item to the beginning position once it reached a certain size or length, but that's not going to work here. In order to create a functioning boundary in this scenario, we need to send the ball in the opposite direction once the ball hits one edge of a boundary. So we'll want to use the edge of our canvas to set the boundaries, and if the ball hits the boundary, then it will return in the opposite direction. So if the Y coordinates value is greater than the height of the canvas, or less than zero, then that means you reach the edge. Once you have reached the edge, the ball should move in a constant negative Y direction. So, how do we do that? Let's create another variable to store the speed of Y coordinate and assign a value of one. Now we have two variables for Y. Circle Y keeps track of its position and Y speed stores how fast the ball will move in the opposite direction. Replace one in the sum total operation with Y speed. Let's also put a console log, open parentheses, circle Y, circle Y, Y speed, Y speed, close parentheses, below our sum total operation. This will allow us to see the change in the ball's position and the speed. Look at the console and you can see the ball starting at 350 and increasing to infinity. We can change the direction of Y speed by multiplying its current value times negative one. Every time circle Y comes into contact with the edge of the canvas, it will switch from positive to negative. Now look at the console again. You can see circle Y go from increasing to decreasing values, and Y speed change from positive one to negative one. Great, the ball now bounces off the canvas walls. Now let's repeat the previous steps, but for your circle's X coordinate. Let's add a circle X variable and set it to 50, then a X speed variable and set it to two. I set the X speed value to two because I want the ball to move faster side to side than up and down. 
Replace 50 with circle X in the circle function and set your conditional to bounce off the left and right walls of the canvas. The right wall of the canvas is the full width, just like the bottom of the canvas is the full height. Okay fam, we have come a long way. We combined all that we have learned from the previous videos to create an animated background. And listen, I've got a little secret to let you in on. See that animated ball we just coded? Well, what if I told you that the ball is interchangeable with other shapes and words? That's wild, no? So let's take it a step further and turn our ball into a moving message to our animated art piece. I'm going to comment out our ball section and add a variable called message under X speed. Remember that variables can store different types of values, such as numbers and text. The message will say, I love my hair. <laughs> Now, I want my message to be in white and size 32, but you can adjust this to your liking. Then replace the X and Y coordinates in the text function with circle X and circle Y. Now we have a powerful message that bounces all over the canvas. Hey, let's get it! Yes, yes, we did it, we did it. All right, I guess we should probably get back to work now. Now, I promise the rest of the work is just as exciting. I want to add an awesome feature to the face so that when I scroll over the canvas with my mouse, the face will change to show all skin tones. First, I will create a variable called skin tones that will store a list of skin tones. This variable uses an object called an array that stores different types of values. After we create the variable, we will go to Google and type in skin tones hex, then click on the first link. Go to the colors palette and select all the skin tones hex code. Copy and paste the hex codes inside of the skin tones array. Each color should be surrounded by quotes and separated by commas, just like this. Now we have a list of skin tones we can use for the colors of our face. The next step is to add skin tone to the actual face we've drawn. So P5JS has a function that allows us to see every time the mouse is moved on the canvas called mouse moved. It's very similar to the XY tool that tracks the X and the Y coordinates on the canvas. So scroll all the way down to the bottom of your canvas below your draw function and add the following. Type in console log, open parentheses, I moved the mouse, close parentheses. Move the mouse anywhere on the drawing, then look at your console. We can use our object array to move through our list. Each skin tone in the list is represented by a number, starting with zero and increases along the number line. To go from one tone to the next, I will need to add one to a counter every time I move the mouse. So let's make a variable called counter and set its value to zero. Just like we set our afro size and hair height values to 380 and 160, we can set skin tones to one value using our counter. Go to the face section, replace the current color with skin tones counter. The face of the color should match that of the first tone in our list. So let's add the following. If the counter becomes greater or equal to the length of the list of skin tones, then reset the counter to zero. Great, now we can go through the list of tones and start over again once it reaches the end. Dope, right? Okay, it's your turn to add other features using the mouse mood function. But before you go, don't forget to save your work or share it with a friend by going to file, then save or share. You are a legit animator after today. We created an animation that was activated by just moving the cursor across the screen. Be sure you come back for our last animated art video where we will create a dynamic animated art piece with pulsating animations. Well, until next time, remember to show yourself a little love. And as always, stay cute and stay coding.